Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are done with our chapter one, moving into the chapter two, talking about performance measurement fundamentals. As a part of this particular chapter, we have different segments to be covered here, talking about 2.1 typical matrix collected in performance testing, 2.2 aggregating results from performance testing, 2.3 key source of performance matrices, 2.4 typical results of a performance test. So here we will be just talking about several things which are done aside the execution of a particular test. And we generally understand that what are the different things like matrices and data which are being collected in order to make sure that you analyze if there are any kind of deviations from the expected. So as a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be getting started with 2.1, typical matrix collected in performance testing. And as this topic is slightly longer, we are breaking them into subtopics. 2.1.1, why performance matrices are needed will be discussed today. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are talking about why performance matrices are needed. And that can be very well related to a generic question, why do we need matrices at all, right? Then we can talk about performance, which goes to the same. So generally a matrix is a kind of calculation or probably a KPI, which generally helps you to identify and monitor the progress of any such activity which you perform. And uh, these matrices give you more of an accurate and precise, precise outcomes in terms of monitoring certain data driven things like you know the one which are driven on certain values and you just don't estimate them rather you have some more precise information to make accurate decisions although so matrices are basically used in form of calculations or maybe a parameter of your uh, execution or activity and that outcome will be used to decide whether any kind of control action is required or probably you are getting deviated from your plan. So that's something which is very generic. We spoke about this in the uh, the foundation level and right now we are getting into the advanced level of it. So we are talking about the performance. So here we are discussing about the similar thing but from the performance point of view. So accurate measurements and the matrix which are derived from those measurements are essential for defining the goals of performance. So we are also relating things like, you know, hits per second, the throughput, the response time, and we're talking about the uh, interaction between the client and the server, and the processing time, processors, the number of processors which are running, resource utilization, the RAM, memory leak, a lot many such things, right? And all this becomes our one of the other matrices. And definitely each one of them have many matrices associated with them in terms of like collecting data during the runtime. So these goals of performance testing and for evaluating the result of performance testing because these matrices will only tell you how exactly your execution go, right? If there are anything which is not meeting the expectations, then you will work upon it. But until unless you have a matrix for it, you cannot identify it ever. So performance testing should not be undertaken without first understanding which measurement and matrices are needed. The following project risk apply if the advice is ignored. So how important a matrix can be and selection of that before planning for the performance test is very important. And what kind of risk we can experience are listed here. Uh, it is unknown if the level of the performance are acceptable to meet operational objectives. Without the matrices, you cannot decide that. And of course, that becomes a big risk for your project that are we really doing something which is as per the expectations? Because you don't know what the expectations are and you're not able to track the progress or track any kind of parameters which will tell you that you are as per the expectation. Second, the performance requirements are not defined in measurable terms. So performance does not mean that I want this application to work for a big crowd. Now, what do you mean by big crowd? And how, how, how do you say that your application is perfect? Is it in terms of response time? It is in terms of number of users. So if it is response time, tell me what is the time you're looking at? If it is the crowd, tell me what's the size of the crowd? Because crowd can be anything. Even if I call 100 people for a function, I call it as a crowd. And when I go for a workshop or seminar, I see 100,000 people, I call it as a crowd as well, right? So things are not clear as far as you define them in a proper manner. 
Number three, it may not be possible to identify trends that may predict lower level of performance. That is getting into the depth of it. Like, okay, from the last few minutes, the trend has been going correctly, but just between the fifth and the fifth, uh, 15th second, there was a deviation. Now, that's the point where you need to drill it down and do a deeper dive to understand that why exactly heal itself. Like between that interval of 15 seconds, between 5 minutes and 5 minutes, 15 seconds, you had a deviation or a drop or probably a peak. So what exactly happened, right? Four, the actual result of performance tests cannot be evaluated by comparing them to a baseline set of the performance measurements that define acceptable or ex unacceptable performance. So that completely depends on determining that whether we will be able to declare that have we met the performance or not? And of course, determining that would definitely require you to have a core static values, which are defined as the expected set of data. And we just try to you know, meet those expectations. Number five, performance test results are evaluated based on the objective or subjective opinion of one or more people. It's not just not that one person executing a scenario and whatever the outcome comes, we just rely on that. No. The same scenario can be executed by different people in different environment at different timings to just see that does that there is there a problem related to geographical distribution is there a problem if people are appearing from different corner of the world is there a problem specific to a timeline of the day so all those things must be checked and again that requires a proper matrix to be analyzed Number six, the results provided by the performance tool are not understood. So, of course, if you are working on a performance testing platform, you do know a performance tool yourself. And all the performance tool comes with hundreds of monitors, which must be enabled before the execution. And if in case, assume your performance execution without any monitors, what the analysis will be all about. As far as you have some data, you can analyze them and come to an outcome, but you don't have any data. What is the analysis part of the performance test is all about. Okay, so that was to talk about the different matrices which we have with us. And we will be uh, making sure that we make use of all possible matrices which are required to monitor the ongoing progress and meet those desired expectations of the performance testing or the performance of the application. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.